So welcome everyone to a new episode of Sophia Luisa's So Zoom In. I'm so excited because we have a couple of wonderful people that we're going to be talking with tonight. The first one is um, Maggie Avila. She is an actress producer who has just made her directorial debut with a documentary called Altitude Not Attitude, which I had a chance to see and it is absolutely fabulous. And we're also going to be having um, Dr. Nancy Irwin. She's going to be joining us in a little bit, but we're going to get started with Maggie. Maggie, welcome to the show. How are you tonight? So excited and so happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. So good to see you. It's so good to see you. I know I, I always see you online and you're you know, you're a Latina actress, and a Latina filmmaker, and to me, that's so exciting. And you are from Mexico City, or I'm sorry, from Mexico. Yes. Country. How from long? Baja. Ensenada, Baja, California, for those Ooh. of you tuning in from Baja. I love you. I love you all, Mexico. I love you all, Hispanics, Latin, Latinx, all of you. But yes, I am from Ensenada. I highly recommend you guys go visit Ensenada. It's beautiful. Oh, sounds beautiful. And somehow margarita just sounds really good right now. <laughs> so. You know, margaritas were invented in Ensenada, actually. Oh, okay, I'll see. We'll talk about it later. Nice connection. Yes. Right, so what brought you to Los Angeles? I'm sorry? What brought you to Los Angeles? Ah, uh, my acting career. So were you always acting when since you were really little and you, you just decided yeah. you want to go for it? Yes, I started off actually as an opera singer. Um, when I was a teenager. And uh, I was so fortunate that I found an amazing mentor. Um, and he adopted a bunch of students and he really, really um, guided our life through his mentorship. He's in a better world now, in a better life now, but his teachings still keep on guiding us. He was amazing. And he um, touched the lives of many, many, many generations in Mexico and in Baja. And uh, so he taught us music. I toured the country singing opera with him and another bunch of beautiful sisters, musical sisters. We call each other because we uh, the bounds that we created by spending so many days and so many hours together were amazing. And so uh, because of uh, the music, I started studying theater. I was invited to model and, and act in commercials and I really liked it. And so I was at the same time in high school. Um, joining the theater groups and, and, and then my acting career film wise took off when I started auditioning and I just continue working on these amazing films in Mexico but there was a point in my life that I thought okay I need more I want to be on the big screen and then an opportunity to open up a film that was distributed by Universal Pictures um, that was done in, in Guadalajara, Mexico, and it was fantastic. I thought, okay, this is my opportunity. I'm gonna move to the big city. I'm gonna go to the Emerald City. And then things didn't work out as much as here in the US. I was traveling back and forth. I was um, exploring the area here. I was networking, attending all of these beautiful conferences like NALIP and, and La Lif that is happening right now. Much success to everyone out there. Um, and so things were opening, doors were opening up for me a whole lot more here. And that's why I stay here because they needed people that was bilingual. Oh, that's wonderful. That's so great. And you've, you've done some work with some big names too. Do you want, <laughs> can we do a little name dropping? Is that okay? Or? Sure, go for it. <laughs> oh. I'm going to move my microphone closer. Do you hear me okay? Uh, yes, I can hear you fine. Okay, wonderful. Okay. okay. There. there we go. All right. Okay. So, so you're still an actress. So yes. you met Michael Warketon. Did I say his name right? Yes. I made a documentary about his life, inspired by his life. Now, what made you decide to do a documentary as your directorial debut? What inspired that? It all happened so fast. You know, you as, as an actor, you read so many scripts, so many books, and you watch so many films. We love films so much in theater that our minds are so, so full of these wonderful, beautiful images. Our, our imagination is so wild and rich that every time a script um, towards the end of, of, of my, my um, I mean, a few years before, jumping into directing this documentary, 
um, every script that landed in my in my hands, um, I was already directing them <laughs> in my in my mind, mm -hmm. and um, I could see the scenes. I would be thinking about, oh, Kurosawa will do this and that, <laughs> and this is oh, this is similar to that, and it was just so fantastic. And so I started reading uh, um, material. I started reading scripts and trying to figure out how to do what to do, and taking courses and studying and watching a lot of YouTube videos. Those help a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, when I met Michael, I was so inspired by his his life, and I talk with him very seriously. I asked him, what are you planning to, to do during the following five to 10 years of your life? Mm. And, and he said, I am a really happy person right now. My firm, because he's a, a financial advisor, he said, um, it's very successful. And so I really am not planning to do anything else, but that and travel and enjoy life. And I said, well, you know, you are tremendously inspired and he said, inspiring. And he said, yeah, people tell me so all the time. People love me. <laughs> yeah, everybody loves you, Michael, but you can change a lot of lives if you will let me do the film about your life. Um, and he said, because a lot of people have been telling me like to do maybe um, YouTube videos for of my travels and clips or something or like a travel show or something like that. And I said, yes, that is very beautiful. But how about if we do... A little bit more such um how is it that you have overcome and how is it that you can be so happy because a lot of people don't have um the physical disabilities that you have and they're still not happy um as you know the film is about michael workington who at age 22 he fell off three stories an escalator and three stories high and broke his neck and became a quadriplegic and despite of that he's despite of that he still has a very um, happy life and he is very successful and he helps a lot of people. And so we went through Spain. We went to, we went to Spain, France, Italy, and the UK. And among all of these gorgeous landmarks, we explore the six phases of recovery that every human goes through after facing a tragedy and how to overcome, how to accept, and how to become whole again. And Michael is so humorous and so, it's an adventure, a trip of a lifetime, what we show in this documentary. And that's why people have been loving it because it's not depressive, depressive at all, mm -hmm. but on the contrary, it's uplifting and, and funny and, and very inspiring. Oh, it is very inspiring. And I'm so glad I had a chance to see it. And what I really liked is you brought such a humanity to it. There was such a realness in the movie. Now, because when you, when you see someone in a wheelchair, um, you, you instantly feel sorry for them. But he came across just like a regular guy. And at one point, I think you were even saying, or he was saying that um, people will like slam the door in his face because they just don't <laughs> really think that he, he could use that. And then when, I, when he said that, I thought, wow, Wait, people what? are rude. You know, <laughs> whether you're in a wheelchair or not, you don't slam a door in someone's face. You know, I was like, what well, is the common courtesy? You know, but I just thought how nice that he's just like, okay, he's just part of what's happening. And I, I really like that you you show that part, but Thank then again, you. you know, to travel so much in a wheelchair, I mean, the incessant planning. How how is that whole process in the production end of the filmmaking? So uh, we have to book so many cars, and as you saw, Michael is a six point five tall man, and his chair is so big, and he is heavy. So we need chauffeurs of this special cars for handicapped people to also be strong to pull him down the car or up and he travels with two nurses in case one of them uh, gets sick or something happens and so we have to also book hotels that have rolled in showers and that the beds are tall enough as to put it underneath his um, his cart or his uh, not towing car, but it's um, like a gurger that pulls oh. him out um, into the bed and out of the bed and so on. And, and so it's so many, so many things you have to be um, prepared in case the chair uh, loses power. Like the first night, mm -hmm. oh my God, the first night we had um, uh, one of his nurses plugged in the, ch the, <laughs> the chair on the wrong outlet 
And you know, Europe is different. Mm -hmm. uh, and so my lady that was with me, the lady that was assisting me with the camera and, um, and I were at that moment finishing uploading, thank goodness, the material after working and traveling and still filming that day for about 17 hours. That was our very first day of filming. OK, mm -hmm. because we filmed from the minute we got out of the plane mm -hmm. and um, into Bar in Barcelona. So we were plugging in something else and unplugging something. It, everything was happening at the same time in the other room. The nurse was plugging in Michael's chair. And then in front of us, there were, um, how do you say, sparkles? And then everything went black. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so we didn't know what happened, but the two of us were like, ah! <laughs> and I was so scared because you know the footage even though it was the first day still is the footage <laughs> and yeah. everything you know came back to normal after I don't know 30 minutes or something and the, I mean the people came over to our rooms we were so embarrassed I, mean, we do, we, I don't know what we did we did the right thing we promised so it was in the other room and mm -hmm. you guys said okay yeah everything's okay and so Michael's chair was to go without power and we you know, the two of us, we went to sleep. Um, it was around, around two in the morning, around seven. Michael was calling every uh, business he could find to find a power um, um, battery for his chair. Otherwise, I mean, he wouldn't be able to go anywhere because the chair is a power chair mm -hmm. and he needed to charge it. Mm -hmm. And so the poor thing, he was so stressed out all day long and we needed to be at the uh, cruise ship um by noon um, so he found a person a business that was open it was a sunday and it was a weekend that was um a special weekend you know um and so and it was a sunday that day was a sunday to top it off and so she found he found someone that was seven hours away and somehow he was able someone someone found someone that found someone that found someone to go pick up the battery and drive it all the way to where we were wow. and so we just like those like that experience we had so many and that is what always happens with Michael but he still he has this fresh happy attitude and then always he says he always says don't add things up just focus on the present problem and focus on solutions and and then but don't stress out don't add up all the problems that you're having because it's not used there's no use for that so just stay focused on solving what you have in front of you and then enjoy life and that is a beautiful beautiful thing that I have learned from him so reassuring well that sounds like great advice for a producer too because you were producing right. as well as directing it and <laughs> but yeah. that's well how, how many incidents like that happened I mean or was that like the big thing and then everything just kind of fell into place afterwards one thing or another yes I and mean, some other places we got into into a place and because people try to do business and they they say yes we do have a car with those measurements and then we get there and um and then the car the taxi or whatever car is going to be our driver for the day they come over and then it turns out that the guy is very tiny and skinny and not strong or something and it's only one person or the car is too small that the chair doesn't doesn't fit and so I have, we have to wait there for hmm, i don't know how long to get another car that really fits in and so many details like those right or or um entertainment or the places that we wanted to to shoot many of those uh, we call in advance uh, because every day I will do my my shot list. Okay, so we're in this city, or the night before, right? I will do uh, my my shot list. Okay, so we're in this city, and these are the top beautiful places, landmarks to visit um, at this city, and just gorgeous places, right? But then I will have to call them and make sure that they were um, handicap accessible, mm -hmm. and some of them say yes, but then they were not. <laughs> So it was a waste of time sometimes that we got in there and then we couldn't get in. And so uh, that happened quite often. And that always happens for Michael. And so I hope that this movie brings awareness to make our world more accessible and understands that people in wheelchair also wants to come out and party and enjoy life and visit these gorgeous places. But what's so interesting is that with all those obstacles, you know, all the phone calls and then, you know, having the, the you know the chance of something not going right they'll, they'll say yes but it's really no for him to just keep going for him not just say okay well you know what I'm just gonna stay home and watch tv you know because so many people would do that 
anyway. You say, I'm not going to bother, but he just keeps going. What do you think is it inside of him that just has that drive to keep going? I think that it's his appreciation for life. This shocked me, sorry, because a person like him, he has um, a little bit of difficulty to breathe and he has to be very careful while he sleeps. Um, also, because it depends on people getting him out of bed and putting him back into bed. And so he understands that he is in a very delicate, posi delicate position, um, even though he manages uh, 440 um, families, people tons of households and he changes lives for so many at the same time he is a vulnerable man who can um be put in danger so easily as you saw in the documentary when he was uh he can't perspirate and he was under the heat and he, we almost lose him and we didn't even know it's that delicate and at the same time so powerful and and, and, and happy and, and 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 helpful to others right so i think that the fact that life can be gone so easily makes him realize, and he's told me this, makes him realize that it is important to be as happy as you can be and, and, and enjoy everything mm -hmm. and, and, and be very grateful and appreciative of everything that you have around you, even every single breath you take. And that has been so beautiful and so inspiring. So I think that that is what gets him going. And another thing that I know gets him going and I saw it and, and it's been the same way for me is that he gets to see people getting happier or getting their lives transformed for the better with the work that he does. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, your life gets just mm -hmm. more beautiful because the happiness of others, making something, doing a little something, even if it is little or big, but to make other people people happier it's just so satisfying it's just gorgeous gorgeous and and so there's so many things that get him going he's a very smart guy as you saw he's a super super smart guy and it takes sometimes brains to realize those things and for those that don't have those kind of brains that kind of intelligence that is why we're making this movie that's why i made this movie because i know a lot of people that are like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, the, what great timing too, because here the pandemic hit, you know, February 2020 for the United States and pretty much everything right. shut down and you, you were able to shoot everything in 2019, right? When you traveled yes. to Europe. So that, that's fortunate that, I mean, very fortuitous. And so now that you came back and so with everything shut down, what has it been like in that part, you know, now you're you know, doing posts, putting it together. You know, is Michael heavily, you know, is he involved in the decision making or is it just all up, all up to you? What was that process like? Yeah, he said that, that his middle name was, um, he said, Maggie, I feel like now my middle name is reimburse me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I filmed uh, starting July uh, 2019. And then we finished, I finished filming in December of 2019, but I started editing in September Okay. and just trying to figure out what is it that I needed, uh, what else do I need it? Or because even though I had 12 terabytes of footage, wonderful, wonderful things, I still needed key questions, like the questions that Dr. Nancy helped us answer. Um, and key questions for his, his, his parents and himself. And, and because Michael, um, it, it's a man. He's a man, man, man. He's a perfect gentleman. And, and I am a woman. It was not so easy for him to just open up his soul to me. Because mm -hmm. we met on July 1st. And then we are together on this cruise ship with all of these other ladies um, 19 days later. So oh. it was really, really, really not easy to just you know, because he was just his charming self, right? He was just a friendly, friendly person. And so, so we have become really close friends and it has become, because he's ha he has seen that I am an honest person, that I am, what am I after? Well, I'm, I'm after the message to put out there, right? And so, um, so the more the time passed, the more he was able to open up and share these things. But at the same time, I wanted this film and him too. That is why we made a perfect match. Um, I wanted this film to bring hope 
and, and to be uplifted. And I did not know that, you know, COVID was going to happen, mm-hmm. that we were going to be um, in isolation and so on. And so when that happened, I was in the middle of filming the first episodes of my American Family TV show. I'll show you here. Yay, that's awesome. Yay. It's very exciting. <laughs> So cool with Mr. Danny Trejo. I'll share with you a little bit more about that. Yeah. And so, and I was um, filming that. And then um, my uh, composer, who's an amazing, amazing artist, as you met her during the panel, Miss mm-hmm. Liana Primiani, her music is just fabulous. She was sharing with me the musical cues. And, and so then and my mother died at the end of January. So in between the shooting of the, the uh, TV series, which was a comedy, mm. in between the scenes, in between cuts, I was selecting the music cues. I was listening to the music cues and selecting. And Liana was so fantastic and so supportive about, about um, you know, sharing uh, the music through, um, you know, virtually. Then, um, and I was dealing with a funeral and my siblings and this and that and all of those things. Then yeah. COVID hit. And so I was so focused on editing and it was so beautiful and so uplifting because to put all of this footage together and, and write a story with all of this, uh, that was, it was like a tremendous puzzle. But the good thing is that I had my theme very ready, that mm-hmm. I knew exactly what I wanted to say, mm-hmm. right? So um, it was as having, achieving a goal daily. And right. so I got addicted <laughs> to, it was that addiction that to, to get a goal late, right. uh, daily, to, to put together a little scene, you know, um, or, or a little uh, um, sequence. It was just so beautiful. And, and it was sometimes... 10 straight hours of editing with my editors. And, and he, the first one was very patient with me because he has, he has his ideas and he's a very experienced filmmaker and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And, and um, I was like, no, we're not here to showcase the hardship of a chair broken or anything like that. We don't need to say that that many times. We can say it only once and that's it. Mm-hmm. And um, it's about you know having a positive attitude. And so then it was, and Michael, obviously because of his condition, he had to be totally isolated. So he was obviously not part of the submitting the filming to film festivals. I was submitting after finishing editing, which was um, March, mm-hmm. um, March, mid-April. Then um, I started submitting to the film festivals. And so I, before COVID, I was sitting behind a computer screen the right. inside not talking to people not going anywhere but just to, they're glued to the computers right mm-hmm. and so it was a, a, a process of submitting to all of the film festivals that would be um you know right apt for us and 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 then uh, then the film festival circuit started and we started getting um admitted and, and invited and we were just so happy about it about that and then re-edits and retouching here and now and then we got distribution okay yes. so oh yeah nancy's just jo- joining us so i'll go ahead and uh, i'm glad we had this chance to talk a little bit nancy dr nancy Irwin. thank you so much for joining us it's nice to see you can you hear us okay dr Irwin. oh <laughs> she's getting there <laughs> She's getting there. Nancy, so good to see you. Hola, you too. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. It's wonderful to see you. Um, so I had a chance to be talking with Maggie for a little bit, and she was saying that you are an integral part to the documentary Altitude, Not Attitude. Would you like to share a little bit about what your process was like working on that film? Oh, I would love to. Well, I got to tell you, I had not met Michael when Maggie interviewed me. This was, I guess, two years ago. And first of all, I always say yes to Maggie to help her out on any project. I knew it would be golden. So I was happy to. And um, what brought me into the field of psychology was trauma recovery. So this seemed right up my alley. And this just underscores the brilliance of her direction and editing that she was able to know 
exactly where to put my responses to all of the activity and the footage that, that she shot of him. So with only hearing about his story and never having met him, it's pretty amazing how well this whole thing just came together. Well, yeah. Well, I had a chance to see the film, and we we met at the screening the other night, and it was first of all it was wonderful to meet you, and I thought it was really well done how you you come in with such a calmness and so matter of factly sharing the whole process of everything that was went on that went on. Um, you talked about six steps, I believe you mentioned a seventh step. Was that? Was that no, they're actually. Or Five phases of grieving, which can be trauma recovering, and the sixth was, yeah, the forgiveness. Yeah. That's key. I think that's just key for everything. Um, so you you kind of came in as a performer yourself into psychology, right? So you kind of like have that that creative spark inside of you anyway. I if I remember correctly, there was a comedy club maybe and I opera, <laughs> right? If I remember correctly. And I, I know Maggie was talking about how she was an opera singer and has that experience. And I believe there's some opera in your background, right? Yes. I am a trained opera singer. I got my um, undergraduate and master's degrees in opera performance, but wasn't good enough for big time. And I didn't want to teach and I discovered there were other things. Uh, I had going for me on stage besides just singing opera, had a flair for comedy. So I went into that for a while and did well. And uh, then I became, I got to be more fascinated in what made people want to do stand up. There's a story behind each person. And a lot of them sadly were tragic or angry or a desperate need for approval. And uh, self included, so <laughs> I started getting more uh, interested in what drove people to that field. And I always say the road from comedy to mental health is very short indeed. <laughs> you have to laugh, at them, right? You, just, you know, whatever's going on, you just have to laugh. That's part of the healing process, right? It helps. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think it's, I think you 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 being part of it really helped balance the film in a lot of ways too and I think what you talked about not only applied to what Mike was going through but kind of what this whole world is going through right now so I I think that oh, was for sure yeah you know so um, absolutely anxiety and depression are huge right now are you seeing more of that with your clients right oh god yeah my business is blowing up yeah <laughs> There's so much pain in the world. It's just most of our practice and most of us therapists, our practices are very full and we're having to turn people away, which is a tragedy in and of itself. It's just horrible. So what do you think is going to happen? Do you think this will eventually just, everything will just kind of calm down or do you think it's going to be a pretty hard way for a while? Well, I think it's more than just the pandemic. I think it's uh, the racial relationships, the political environment. Those are huge factors driving a lot of division, anxiety, depression, addiction use, all of these things. It's just, there's a lot going on in the world. And uh, with information coming at us at the speed of light, literally, we feel like we can't get away from it. We're all constantly bombarded. So I think all of these factors together, <sighs> It's a lot of stress to say the least. And for the silver lining is people are really taking mental health issues extremely seriously now. I'm so glad people like, uh, is her name Osaka, the uh, tennis player uh, who refused to be interviewed by the media about her condition. She pulled out of one of the competitions because she wanted to work on her mental health and didn't want to talk about it with the media. And I so appreciate that. It's like, respect my space. This needs to be respected. And the more people who do, mm -hmm. I think mental health issues can mm -hmm. be taken much more seriously. Well, I, I think that's why. And, and, the, and the stigma can be decreased. Right. That's crucial. Well, I, and I think that's one great thing about this documentary you guys were both part of, you know, you're exposing a more, you're exposing things that normally aren't talked about or dealt with, you know, a quadriplegic, you know, and then right. the mental, you know, that mental shift that goes with that, you know, a vibrant young man, all of a sudden that life is taken away and now he has to readjust to a new life and he takes it on with great power, you know, but then a lot of people are going through different shifts 
who may not be quadriplegic, but having to deal with, you know, loss of job, you know, um, homelessness or whatever other things going on. And we just need to find that Absolutely. positive attitude. Um, so when you were working on the film, did you get a chance to meet Michael directly or was this all kind of done separately? I met Michael at the premiere. Oh, oh really? <laughs> And I was thrilled that the, the, uh, the footage included him talking about that he was suicidal at the beginning. I'm really glad he said that. I mean, I'm sorry he felt that way, but that is such a natural response to a major loss in someone's life. I so appreciated him honestly talking about that and how, thank God, he moved through that phase. Just admitting that and seeing where he is now is one of the most inspiring parts of the film for me. And I think it's such an important message that, yeah, you can get really, really down, but thank God he didn't attempt and look at him now, my God. You know, charming, yeah, he's very vibrant. And doesn't let anything successful, hold back, right? Very yeah. successful. Yeah. So, yeah. I have to ask, so you, uh, you know, working with people who are dealing with so many heavy issues, how does it affect you? Um, <laughs> I, I've always wondered that, you know, with so much stuff happening and you're helping so many other people, but I'm sure you're, you know, you're present there for them. You're there for them. So how do you cleanse your palate, if you will? Right. I get asked this all the time and we are trained to do this. Um, otherwise you get compassion fatigue, also known as burnout, and we don't want to do that. So a couple of things. Um, one thing is when I'm working with anyone is I focus on the healing, not the horror. Wow. If our medical doctor and somebody came in with a bleeding wound, I wouldn't go, oh my God, he's bleeding out. I would go, here's what we need. This is what we do. Well, psychologists do the same thing we have a sufficient dissociation where we're listening and we're tracking progress, a treatment plan and following a person's thinking, their behavior. Of course, with a dollop of compassion and empathy around that, of course, but without getting sucked into it. So that's technically, in a nutshell, how we do it. Um, emotionally, at the end of the day, how do I, well, self-care is crucial. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a balance of taking care of yourself and your business, you're going to get eaten alive with this business. We have to find a way to, well, for me, it's exercise. It's watching Dodgers baseball. And we're ahead right now, <laughs> five to zip. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, being outside in nature, having fun with my husband, watching great movies, my favorite stand-up comics. Uh, going to concerts when I can, eating nutritious food. It's all, you know, physical health management and fun. You got to take a break and keep that balance. That's crucial. So I, I think that's great. I think balance is everything. So I'm so glad you advocate balance. And, and going, oh, yeah. back, going back to the documentary, you know, Michael, he made sure he was having fun. Now he was planning trips he wanted to do. He was, you know, going for, you know, just, going for it. And I, I, I think people sometimes feel like they can't, they give themselves, they give themselves these limiting beliefs. Like I, I can't do that. You know, I have to deal with, you know, a car that may not show up or, you know, a wheel that might break, like, which he even talked about. He talked about his wheel breaking on the right. plane. So right. oh. <laughs> what, do you, and I, what do you say to people who have these limiting beliefs? You know, you have a movie like this that says, hey, there's no such thing as limiting beliefs. You know, we're going to push through. And Maggie, you did a beautiful job right. showing that. But so many of us, I mean, even, you know, actors, you know, aspiring opera singers, you know, people who want to be creative, they have such talent, but then they believe, oh, I can't do that. I can't, I can't submit. I can't you know, put right. my, my work out there. And they are blocking themselves. What is the first Absolutely. step to help someone get past that? Well, I explain to people that um, beliefs can be changed and beliefs are not facts. We can't change scientific facts. Your height, your age, I, I would say your gender, but Lord knows we can change that these days, right? Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately for some people. Uh, but when it comes to our beliefs, 
we can always change that. For example, um, um, I don't want to be Jewish anymore. I want to be Buddhist. Change that belief. I don't want to uh, be Democrat anymore. I want to be Green Party. Bam. We can always change our beliefs. And it may be a little, take a little bit longer than that to shift from, um, if I see alcohol, I have to drink it, for example, or if I have one drink, I have to have eight, <laughs> to I can have one, I can have two, I can moderate it, or I can give it up entirely if that's my choice. So there's a huge difference between a fact and a belief. Limiting beliefs can be changed as long as you choose to plug into a realistic belief that serves you. And I think that goes back to those steps you taught during this, during the movie, you know, we naturally go through this progression, you know, whether, you know, being suicidal, then being angry, then you know, acceptance and just all those processes of what's happening right. before you say, oh, well, I could just change my mind about it. You know, but it just seems like it's a whole process that, um, but we all have the power to do that. Like um, the Wizard of Oz, Dorothy's Red Shoes. You know, it's like you have the power to do it. Just do it. Yes. Okay. I just love that example. Absolutely. I love, love that example. And so Nancy, may I ask you? Um, so when you see people, you identify that the, after um, having had a, a tragedy or some sort of trauma, you find out immediately that they are going through one of the phases of the recovery? Yeah, usually they're in denial or anger or depression, typically when they come see me, especially if it's early intervention. Yeah. Right. And so then you think that this film will help people realize that, oh, I am going through this phase and then I can, I eventually will move into this. I will be experiencing anger, I, but eventually I will be experiencing acceptance and it's eventually I will get to become a whole person again. Absolutely. It helps people to identify where they are and understand that those phases are perfectly natural. We're all human. Those are very human feelings and phases to move through. Knowing you're not alone, that others before you and now and in the future go through that, that helps enormously. So you don't think you're crazy, that the tragedy is bigger than you are, because we are all bigger than the worst thing that happens to us. Oh, Look at Michael. He's done great things. Look at Michael. And he continues to do great things with a lot of joy. He's thriving. Yeah. So more He's of absolutely. us, you know, more of us need to do that. More of us need to, you know, just start claiming our own life, claiming our joy, you know, finding that balance. It's all possible. And I, I think this movie, Completely. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's wonderful. So, all right. So now that you've been on, been in this documentary, did you get the film bug? Do you want to be in more movies? Do you want to, <laughs> you know, do you want to go back and go for it? <laughs> that stage bug get you? <laughs> I have to ask for well, I, <laughs> I really have no desire to do um, stand up comedy routine again. I get asked this all the time. I really, I do a lot of media appearances, so that satisfies my ham gene wanting to be on stage. But for me, it's, it's working on projects like this that have a lot more, not that stand up and, and humor is very meaningful, of course, and it can touch and inspire people. Um, I'm just very fulfilled where I am. Um, would I love to be involved in a TV show where I could use all of my skills as a therapist? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you're wonderful. You know, you know, you have a wonderful presence and everything you were saying really resonated. And I hope a lot of people take that message and do something with it. And you don't have to be physically disabled or, or disabled. You can really take that information just to what, you, you know, what's right. going on in your life now, which I thought was great. I mean, we all, it seems like everyone always has something, but you, you can always keep going forward no matter what, no matter what. <laughs> It's true. I mean, there's a lot of people that they look so happy in the outside and so normal, but we don't know what they are carrying. We don't know that they are thriving towards overcoming something or just achieving a goal. And some people may even be broken or, or scarred 
in the inside, but there is still, you know, hopefully when they see this film, they will realize that, oh, okay, so I'm gonna move yeah. on out of this phase and I'm gonna move back into that one. <laughs> you know, Meg, yeah. I have to say too, you, know, you were very brave, you know, as living in another country, you came to this country you know, not knowing what it was going to be like, you know, you want, you had a dream you wanted to pursue and you went for it. And not a lot of people do that. So that took a lot of courage. And then for you to create a film to help someone else fulfill his dream, you know, by sharing his story, you know, and just him overcoming all of his obstacles. So I thought that was really beautiful, you know, to have that strength and courage to really just embrace life. And not many people could say that. Thank you. Maybe that is why Michael and I uh, are a perfect business match. Um, but it's all thanks to Dr. Nancy, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> because um, when I moved here, I thought that I was able to speak English. I would understand it and, and read it perfectly. But then when I would go to a casting office, the casting directors would say, what did you just say? <laughs> what? And even Dr. Nancy, when I would go to her, she would try to repeat like three times. I think that you're saying this, <laughs> but thanks to her, I was able to overcome everything. It was just so much. It was really, I was too young and my daughter was so little and I was going through a divorce. I, I just, it was so, 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 so much. And then she helped me discover that I, it was not actually the, the divorce. It was actually the the wounds that I had from my childhood and so many, so much healing. It was amazing, amazing, amazing. And then she helped me be set for life. And sometimes I go, I should call Dr. Nancy. And then wait, but she would advise me. Ah, it was fantastic. It's one of those doctors that you just see her and she fixes you <laughs> or redirects you to being back, being whole and being empowered and becoming healthy again. And that is why I always thank her and thank God for letting me find her. It's funny because she says like, how did you find me the first time? Because I was Googling and back then in 2008, 2007. Wow. Yes, exactly. Um, I I was fascinated that she used to be a stand-up comedian and also an opera singer mm -hmm. and that she was in hypnotherapy. And I was looking for hypnotherapists because I know I understand that our mind has so much power over us that we, uh, we don't even know. I wanted a hypnotherapist. And then she turned out to be also an opera singer. And I thought, oh, she's going to understand me. <laughs> yes, that was wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, well, thank you for your kind words, Maggie, but I got to say, you're the one who's done all this. You have created your success. I was very happy to facilitate the path, the pathway, but you are the one who's done all of this. Amazing. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. And because of people like you, we get to do it. So hello, everyone out there. Go visit people <laughs> like Nancy, Dr. Nancy, or other people that are there to help you because it is possible to just achieve more of everything that you want right. to do because of yeah. these amazing people. And um, Luisa, Sophia, can I um, uh, also share? Sophia and I recently, a few months ago, since a, a couple of months ago, right? We have uh, been part of this um, um, accountability group, right? We share our goals and it's truly inspiring to see all of these actors, filmmakers sharing what we are trying to do. Uh, we are doing, then, we're not trying, we are. <laughs> But we are doing and sometimes it is we didn't get it done so we roll over the, the items of the to-do list for the following week and then it's fascinating how empowering how beautiful it is it's been to have a support group it's been just so beautiful to just share with someone out there Absolutely. and it is possible for a lot of people so i just wanted to share that for those out there that are watching us and and, and so they realize that there is angels around the world that can help you accomplish beautiful things too. Yep, we're not alone. We right. all need one another. We do, we do. Yeah. And even though we're in isolation, we can still reach out and connect. And hopefully yeah. the isolation part will end soon. And Ooh, let's yeah. hope. Um, but there, I mean, there, there are so many blockages coming up for so many people right now because of this. And I, I think it really does take a lot of courage for, for someone to tell themselves, I do need help. Um, and to go to someone to seek out that help. 
because I, I think we always have, you know, oh, they're going to think I'm stupid. They're going to think I'm crazy. You know, right. I, social media or the media really puts a lot of pressure on people to feel that way, I think. Or to um, look that way. Oh, look at me. I'm so happy. Right. <laughs> right. One of the things I love about the movie or the documentary is he's, he's just so full of life. You know, he is so full of life and he's like, I want to live life. I want to say hello to you. I want to, you know, I want to know you just by being you. And I think, you know, as more and more people come, come to feel that way, I, I think that kind of heals the whole collective. Wow. So, yes. I love that you said that. So everyone that is watching out there, every household in America should have, in Canada right now, for now, should have this movie. Yes. <laughs> Uh, how, where can we find this movie? And iTunes. iTunes? It's everywhere. As for today, yes, I'm so glad that I get to celebrate with you, ladies, because today, because you two are incredibly inspiring and so empowering. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, as for today, it's officially out there in the world and it's distributed by Gravitas. Thank you, Megan, Lindsay, everybody in Gravitas. I love the whole team. It's been fantastic. It's been amazing. Also shout out for uh, the social architects. They are really, really, really an amazing team wow. that recently joined. And so today is the day um, that the film is out since from today on and it's everywhere. Wow. But we highly recommend that you guys watch it on your Apple TV or iTunes because the proceeds or a, part, a portion of the proceeds are going to be donated to charities that support people with disabilities. Fabulous. So thank you for buying it and renting it and, and helping more lives become happier and healthier. Oh, that's beautiful. And I, awesome. love, I love that you're donating the money to charities. Which ones are you um, donating to? The Dana and Reef uh, found Christopher Reeves Foundation, right? Uh, Creative Steps Foundation, mm -hmm. um, Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge, Wonderful. and also a Will to Walk Foundation. Beautiful. That is wow. so cool. Well, yeah. so okay, so now that you have this under your belt, your directorial debut, what's next? Oh, apparently, oh, we are um, hoping hoping for that. We have the My American Family TV show. Okay. There it is. Uh, airing right now? Yes, wow. which is airing right now. And it is on Amazon Prime. You guys can see it. Over here, I work as an actress. Okay, you look gorgeous. The, well, thank you. Wonderful Mr. Danny oh. Trejo. And it's a TV show where the Martinez clan, um, it's headed by, my, by me, the matriarch of the family, and my husband, Steve Jacks. We thought we were talking in, um, we were taking in a Chinese exchange student, but we ended up with um, six and a half foot tall Russian pushing 30, who just happened to be studying in China. <laughs> oh my and God. it's fantastic. It's a really funny TV show. And so I am booked on another film. I am hoping for more films for sure. And, and also I am, this weekend, we are shooting another uh, TV series called Theater Tub, like YouTube, YouTube, but it's Theater Tube. And it's a comedy uh, about the behind the scenes of making a Shakespearean play. And it's fantastic that the team, wow. the group is amazing. It's another TV series, a short form, not like this one. That This one on American, My American Family on Amazon Prime, it's a 10, uh, 30 minutes episode. Okay. And uh, this one is, is it's a bit shorter, it's different. But then after that, I am open for more acting gigs. So please no ask me. No <laughs> and I am also reading um, scripts I am about to select. I'm very close because I have amazing scripts in my hands to either produce or direct, which I can mm -hmm. help it. I day, I, uh, day and night, I dream, I daydream about it. It's just been such a beautiful, beautiful experience. The, the editing process, the filming process, the framing, the learning so much. It's just so beautiful. Ooh, beautiful. Well, you're a natural. Thank you. <laughs> you're absolutely a natural, gifted Thank at you. it. Thank you so much. I have been it's watching amazing. a lot of films through my, my whole life, so. Okay, well, I have to ask, is Dave, I'm sorry, is Michael interested in acting himself? Because he looked really good on the camera, very comfortable in front of the camera, and he seemed to kind of enjoy being in front of the camera, I thought. 
isn't he a great storytelling? I mean, that was so easy for me. He's a great storytelling he, tell, teller. He's got his stories down. Um, not sure about that. He goes like, mm, yeah, but he he loves the camera, of course. He, you know, you know, he's so charming. He loves love the camera, but not acting. Probably more into producing. He's um, sounds like he's open to do another. Um, a traveling show where we wow. would be using, you know, hopefully um, helping people as well, but still enjoying life but around the world. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Um, I wow. want to do the movie be, of behind the, the scenes. There's so many things, so many projects. But again, there is other projects that are um, closer to be finished cooking. So we'll see how, how, you know, how time is when it comes to filming. Some things it's just flow and some other things get right. yeah, move around. <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> there's always opportunities to make, make it happen. Yes. You know, it's always about either knocking doors or emailing or finding, finding the way. There is so many, so many things one can do and oh, it's so all everything right. is possible. So it's mm going keep doing and and dr nancy would you and you would be interested in being part of a talk show possibly as as part of what you do you would oh be. god yeah <laughs> we see we're putting that out into the universe you never know what's gonna happen i, I thought you were absolutely beautiful on screen very comfortable oh, thank very you positive. you know you really own you have a wonderful presence and I, I thought you added a lot of value to the documentary. So I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. I, I certainly enjoyed it. Well, I think it's a wonderful project. It was wonderful meeting both of you. Thank you. You're both very busy with lots of wonderful things going on. Altitude, not attitude, available now on Apple TV and iTunes and many other platforms, shall we say, or shall we just leave it open to checking out your website, which I will post Yes, uh, go, go ahead and just check our website and um, altitudenotattitude.com uh, because we really want to encourage them. It is everywhere right now, yes, but we really want to encourage them to go through Apple and iTunes so that we can donate and support these organizations. Okay. Yes. Then we'll just say iTunes and Apple TV because that's what really matters. Right <laughs> and um, Dr. Nancy, if anyone wanted to reach out to you, can we share any contact information or are you overwhelmed yeah. right now? I am overwhelmed, but you know, I have a waiting list. Things happen, things, there are cancellations, that's life. So yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm very easy to Google. It's Dr. Nancy Irwin and Irwin is with an I. My website is just drnancyirwin.com. And by chance, are you on social media? I am, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Twitter. I guess that's it. See your hip. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. And we are tagging her in all of our posts. Oh, good. As well. So everybody just going to, you know, any altitude, not attitude, or mine, Maggie.avila.official on Instagram or anywhere else, um, Maggie Avila. And uh, you will see the posts and the pictures and the sharing, the videos and clips and everything about the documentary. And Dr. Nancy will be there tagged in. Oh, and we'll. Awesome. Will the film be screening in any other theaters? It looks like it. We we are receiving invitations and there is possibilities. Uh, we are considering that. Hopefully it would, it would because you know how it is, is word of mouth, word of mouth, excuse me. Uh, so m very likely. So we will definitely let you know. Um, we would be very excited to definitely do that. So we will see. Yeah, there's wow. so much that can still be done. So, 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 so much. So, <laughs> well, we'll and yes. now that everything's opening up again, I think I think people need to go see it. And, you know, get a dose of feeling good, and you know, yeah. and know that life can change at a minute. And even when it does, you can still have that feel good. I got this attitude. You know, which which Michael shows us that he can have. Now, I I know it's not an overnight process, and he really shares authentically who he is. And I just thought that was absolutely beautiful. You know, you can be your best self just by being you. And that was so inspiring. So mm -hmm. thank you both so much for joining me on my show. So zoom in, I'm going to post your links in, on the YouTube page. Is there anything that you would like to add before we sign off? Either one of you? Um, just thank you. Thank you. Just thank you so much. Thank you for keep being your wonderful self. Thank you for having us. And thank you so much, Dr. Nancy, for joining us. And to everyone, you're blessed to be alive. Keep on going. Watch our movie and watch all the movies that you can that are like this one, positive, that give you 
hope and, and, and learn about the stories of real people helping other people, couples being healthy, happy couples, and so on. Everything that is beautiful and healthy, the music, be mindful of the lyrics of the music you listen to, all of those things. Be careful, be extremely mindful of the health of your mind, what you put in, just as what we're mindful, what we put in into our mouth, what we eat, same way. Just be, 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 be super, super mindful of your own health in every way. So, and thank you so much for being here with us. <laughs> Thank you, Maggie. And, and thank you, Dr. Nancy Irwin. Is thank you, Sophia. You. And I look forward to seeing you both. Would you like oh, to add anything before, you, before we sign off? Okay. I just love what Maggie said. And I, you know, I feel like I have the greatest job in the world. I get to watch people grow and shift. And my dream is that everyone lives a life that they love. I love that. And I, I love that you're both opera singers. That's so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Yeah, and the LA Opera Theater has just opened up again. So wow. <laughs> I'm a fan. I can't sing, but I love it. So, do you guys ever just sing for the sake of singing? Yeah. I do. I do family weddings and things, and I go to the LA Opera a lot. So I'm thrilled they're going to be hopefully opening a reopening this this fall for the oh, season. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Amazing. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you both so very much. I appreciate your time and have a beautiful, beautiful summer. Well, spring still, but we're heading into summer. And I, I hope to see you both again very soon. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks, thank Sophia. you, Dr. Nancy. Have a great thank one. Thank you, everyone. Maggie. Bye. Me too. Bye. <laughs>